Okay, now we'll demonstrate how to set up nitrous oxide using the map switching feature, the ECU's ability to run a window switch, as well as wide open throttle switch. It's pretty easy to use. Um, the window switch actually operates off of the stock flapper valve solenoid. So assuming you've done a small airbox mod, um, that solenoid is no longer in use anyhow. Then you can reflash the ECU to either turn on a shift light um, or turn on a relay to activate nitrous as well as your map switching feature uh, with the harness that I build. So if we go into our advanced settings we can see how this works. Up here you've got your re reprogram IAC which is the airbox solenoid and you've got a arm criteria, disarm criteria um, on my bike, I've got it set up to turn nitrous on at 6,000 RPM. And it's giving me a little warning here telling me that I've now reprogrammed my flapper valve solenoid at OK. And I will shut it off at 10,800 RPM. You want to make sure that your rev limiter is set higher than this value. You don't want to spray nitrous into the rev limiter. And then for solenoid activation, you've got normal, which is Anytime the engine RPM sees that, it would turn it on. Or if you check it, you can do it with throttle position sensor greater than 85%. So basically, wide open throttle between 6 and 10,800 RPM will be able to turn nitrous on as well as run our secondary ignition and fuel map. There's a bunch of other values in here, um, I'm sorry, settings, but most of which we don't need to worry about it at this time. Other than now we are spraying nitrous, uh, there is one other thing I will do is you can turn the ignition dwell time up to get a, you know, a better spark. Right now the current uh, maximum set point you can put on there is 120%, so we'll go ahead and select that. Hit close. We'll edit our fuel map. Um, as you go through tuning your motor map, which is this one right here, your TPS fuel map, um, you know, for all your aggressive throttle stuff, you know, let's say you've got a bunch of cells in here that through the course of your dyno tuning all got changed. Um, so a little bit of fuel got pulled out here. Let's say some more fuel got added here. Um, there's another feature in the software that will copy everything from your motor map over to your nitrous map. You want to make sure that uh, any fuel you add for nitrous, you want to do that in addition to this map that you've already tuned. So instead of having to go over to this MS Fuel map and hand copy all of that, you can actually go to your TPS map here. And if I just hit C for copy, I have to do it this way. It will copy all of the values from this map over to the MS map. Okay, I'm going to hit OK. Now if I go to my MS fuel map, which is my nitrous map, you'll see that all those values get carried over. So this would be our motor map now that we would want to go ahead and you know, start adding fuel to for nitrous. In my particular case, I turn nitrous on from 6,000 to 10.8, from 85% throttle and more. So I want to make sure I overlap those cells due to you know blending and averaging and how the ECU figures out where it's at. So I'm going to back up one RPM level as well as one throttle angle. So I'll go from 70 to 100% throttle from 5600 RPM. I'm just going to carry it all the way as far as the software will go here, 12,800. I was running a 50 shot, um, which would be about a roughly a 20% increase in throttle. And if we want to do 20% real easily, we can use this asterisk button here four times. First time I hit it will give me a 5% bump in fuel, 10%, 15%, 20%. So now in these values here, in this MS fuel map, which is for nitrous, I've got 20% more fuel than I do in this motor map here in these areas. Okay, so that's our fueling. Same thing for ignition. Um, 
probably not going to do a whole lot of tweaking of our ignition maps in here for the motor, but um, the same principle applies for copying all these values over. If we hit C, copy, it'll copy all these values to the nitrous map. We'll hit OK. Go over to the nitrous map and you'll see that all those values are there. <clears throat> now just like I did with fueling, I'm going to say from 70% to 100% throttle from 5600 RPM all the way out. I'm going to go ahead and pull some timing out. So here I'll use the negative button. Let's, for example, pull two degrees of timing. Okay, so now we're done in the ignition here. We'll check our levators again. So we're set for 11,200 RPM, which is good because we had our nitrous stop spring at 10.8. At this point, it would be a good idea to check your map switching. Um, if you bought a harness from me, it should work automatically, assuming you've got your toggle switch on. Um, but to make a dry run without the bottle turned on, to make sure that your air fuel gets uh, quite a bit richer when you hit uh, wide open throttle, you know, between 6 and 10,800 RPM. Once that's verified, you can move on to actually spraying it and get your tune tweaked in. Um, this was after a couple of pulls on my bike at um, Schnitz Dino Service by Ryan Schnitz here. You can see that uh, you know we bumped up uh, 50, 53, 54 horsepower with the 50 horse jet. Um, tuning was pretty easy. Air fuel was all kept in line. Pulled some ignition timing out to play it safe. And... Uh, that's pretty much it.